Before we can study the customer journey through all of the touch points, it is vital to first understand that all customers are not alike. Every tourist is different, and market segmentation is the key to managing these differences. To illustrate the importance of market segmentation, we ask tourists, why did you come to Queensland? And what is the best experience you had here? This is what they said. So we're here to see the birds, and um, there's the greatest sort of collection of different birds you'd see anywhere in the world, all in the one place. And so we have a lot of specials and uh, special locations, and, and, and uh, this area is very interested because the culture of the Aborigines and so on. The Stockman Hall of Fame, we could listen to all the different stories. It was fantastic. The Qantas one, the guide that took us around gave us all the information. It was very, very good. I really liked the spear and boomerang throwing. I managed to hit one of the bags with the spear, which is pretty cool. So different tourists have very different ideas of a perfect experience. Harvesting these differences is what market segmentation is all about. Using market segmentation means splitting tourists up into groups of similar tourists or market segments, understanding them really well, finding one or more segments that want what we have, and developing an irresistible experience specifically for them. But how can we split tourists up? There are two possible ways. We can use what we call common sense segmentation. We do this when we know in advance which characteristic to use to group tourists. Looking at this survey data set, for example, we can choose couples without children as a market segment. Then, we use any other information we have about them to describe them. Age, the number of vacations they take each year, and benefits they seek when going on vacation. Or, if we're unsure how to best split tourists up, we can use data-driven market segmentation. Using the same data, we can use information about five benefits sought to create segments. This segment, for example, wants to relax, does not want action, and wants pristine, sandy beaches. They do not want to experience culture and meet new people. Again, we can use any additional information available to us to understand this segment as best we can. It is important to keep two things in mind with market segmentation. First, Choosing to target a market segment is a long-term commitment. It's a marriage, not a date. Once the experience has been customized for one segment and the brand image developed, it is very, very difficult to change your mind. Second, data-driven market segmentation analysis is tricky. Many decisions have to be made which influence the resulting segmentation solution. For example, you need to have high-quality data as a starting point. Bad data never leads to good segments. You need to have sufficient sample size. Look at this chart. Each dot is one tourist. How many segments are there? Hard to tell, right? What about now? The answer is that there are two segments. The beach tourists craving relaxation and the action tourists enjoying man-made attractions. We needed more data in our two-dimensional space to see this. So does the algorithm that computes a segmentation solution. You need to understand if real segments exist or if you need to create segments artificially. Look at these two data sets. The segments in the left chart can easily be identified. The data in the right chart contains no distinct segments. If we try to find segments, we will find different segments every time we repeat the calculation. In such a case, we need to acknowledge that real market segments do not exist. We need to create segments. Keep in mind that, although real, distinct and well-separated segments do not exist, it is still better to treat the tourists located in the top right corner, the relaxing beach tourists, differently from those in the bottom left corner, the action tourists. So we need to repeat our calculations to find out whether we are in the lucky position to identify existing segments, or whether we are forced to artificially create segments. 
You're better off using raw data than using factors, which are combinations of variables in the raw data. It is also important to present segmentation results in a way that is easy for everyone to understand. This is best done with a chart. Look at this table, for example. It is difficult to profile segments based on this table. However, if we put the same information in a smartly designed chart like this one, we can immediately see the key segment characteristics. Segment 1 is keen on relaxation, sand and beach, pristine nature and peace and quiet. Segment 2 is interested in action, theme parks, meeting new people and nightlife. Finally, the market changes all the time. Continuous monitoring of the market is therefore critical to be able to make adjustments when required. So, what are the benefits of market segmentation? You will offer the best experience for your segment. They will enjoy this experience and return. They will share their excitement with others. You will develop a brand image for serving this segment well. This will give you a long-term competitive advantage and you will spend much less on marketing because you will talk to a subset of the market only. So, tourists are not all the same. It is worth taking the time to understand differences between tourists and choose the market segment you can delight.